Hello, fifth graders. Have you ever noticed a particular bird that might nest somewhere near your house? Or um, maybe you got near its nest. How did it act? I remember one time I was mowing my lawn and a hummingbird was feeling threatened. And I must have gotten near its nest and it started chasing me. It even dive bombed me in the back of the head. For some reason, birds do like to chase me, even when I'm minding my own business. But that's not what the story is about today. However, it is about a special hawk that chooses to live where most hawks would not choose to live. Let's read to find out about this famous hawk. But before we read, let's look at our learning targets for today. Today we are learning to determine two or main ideas and key details. I'm going to make my picture just a little bit smaller, or I thought I would. We're learning to determine two or more main ideas and key details, including sentence structure and figurative language. We will be successful when we explain how the key details support the main ideas. We are also learning to explain interactions between two or more individuals. We will be successful when we can explain the interactions between two or more individuals by using specific information from the text. <clears throat> We're also learning to determine the meaning of and use of academic and content related words in a text. We will be successful when we can determine the meaning of the words by defining, illustrating, or representing writing a sentence, and providing antonyms and synonyms for the words. Let's look at the academic vocabulary. We can look up the definition or meaning in the dictionary, but a visual using the word in a sentence and identifying antonyms and synonyms are also useful to understand and remember the meaning of the words. So let's think about how we will remember the definition of distinctive. We see the definition is a marking to separate or make different. It can mean distinguished from others. So, hmm, how could we draw a picture to help us remember the meaning? Hmm, you know, sometimes I see people that have a different color hair, like they've dyed it a a, an unusual, not a normal hair color. I wonder if they're trying to be distinctive. Hmm, what else could we do? <clears throat> I like to draw a picture and sometimes use caption or word bu bubbles. Here I have a picture of some tennis shoes, but there is one pair that is distinctive. Yes, I'm sure you identified it. It is the red pair. It's distinctive because it's different from all of the others, which are white. <clears throat> As I read the story, I see that pale male, a hawk, has distinctive colors. I want you to pay attention to the text as we read, and let's see if you can identify how pale male is distinguished from the others. I want you to see that sentence. Pale male's unusual coloring made him distinctive. Therefore, the citizens of New York City easily recognized him. An antonym is a word that means the opposite of the word, the vocabulary word. So. When we think of the opposite meaning of distinctive, we can see that identical, like, or similar would be good antonyms for distinctive. They don't stand out, they're not unusual, but a synonym for the word distinctive would be something that is similar. So a word that has a similar meaning would be maybe different, distinguishable, or even unlike would be a synonym for distinctive. 
I'm going to be providing the definitions for the next three words, but you will need to complete the rest of the graphic organizers for the next three words, just as we have done for distinctive. This will happen at the end of our lesson today. So take notes to see how you can think of how to draw representations or use the words in good sentences, as well as maybe using some antonyms and synonyms. Your first word will be the word thrived. Thrived is past tense, and it means to have developed or progressed or flourished. We've had this word before in several other texts. Sometimes we've looked at it as lived or um, survived. <clears throat> Think about how you would draw, draw the visual representation as we read the story, and how would you use thrived in a good sentence based on how it's used in this text. Then think of your antonym and synonym. Your next word is exclusive. It means not allowing others to participate. <clears throat> it can also be used as being known to be expensive. Are you thinking? Wonder how you're going to draw that one. Ornate is your third word. It means to be decorated or covered, possibly even with fancy patterns or shapes. Hmm, I can think of ways I could draw that representation. Have you thought of your antonyms and synonyms? Let's read the text and see if that helps. Pale male, citizen hawk of New York City. I'm going to move my picture again. One crisp autumn day in 1991, a red-tailed hawk flew across the Hudson River from New Jersey. He flew over smokestacks, skyscrapers, and ant-like traffic to a rectangular oasis smack in the center of New York City. The hawk soared above Central Park. He surveyed the trees the small lakes, the tall buildings and all fours, on all four sides. And with his keen hawk vision, he spotted lunch. So many plump pigeons and rats and squirrels. Did you notice all of the figurative language on this page? Ant-like traffic. <laughs> yes, that's a simile. It it does mean um, using the word like or as, right? Good job. Did you see any others? All right. So, hmm, I want you to look at the word oasis. I always think of oasis as a quiet spot on a sandy beach with palm trees and a nice gentle breeze, just a place to relax, maybe read a book. Yep, you know I love those warm climates and beaches, don't you? However, an oasis doesn't have to be a sandy beach somewhere. Some people think of their home as an oasis. Let's see what maybe the New Yorkers would consider as an oasis. Remember, if there is a word you are not familiar with, jot it down and then go back and read around the, t the word in the text and see if there are some clues in what that word might mean. I also underline the word smack. It's figurative language here. It does not mean smack like smack your lips with noise. It does not mean slap someone's face. It use, it's used as an emphasis to recognize the location this time. Red-tailed hawks often stop for a few days and sometimes spend the winter in Central Park, but they are shy birds and eventually fly away to quiet farmlands or wooded mountains. This bird was different. He liked what he saw and he stayed. Bird watchers in Central Park liked what they saw too. A spectacular red-tailed hawk. He loomed large in the sky with a wingspan of four feet and his unusual coloring, beige rather than dark brown, with breast and belly feathers nearly pure white, 
made him easy to track. I see a clue in the text to tell me how Pale Mill was distinct. Do you see it? Jot down in your journal what you think it is. Hmm, why, did you, why do you think Pale Mill decided to stay in New York City? And how do you know that? I'm going to move my picture so we can see the text. The bird watchers named him Pale Mail and kept notes on him daily. Pale Mail hung around the park the way a teenager hangs out at a mall. He dive bombed tasty pigeons and rats at their litter can snack bars. He chased after ducks and was spotted terrorizing squirrels, seemingly just for the fun of it. As Red Hill as red-tailed talks go, he was a teenager. His round tail feathers gave it away. These hawks don't get their distinctive reddish brown tail feathers until they are mature, about two years old. Did you notice any more figurative language in this? Yes, the comparing, they're comparing pale male, the author is comparing pale male to it as a teenager. And then even described what teenagers might act like and that pale male's doing that too. There's another figurative language here and that's where he um, was dive bombing for the pigeons and rats as, um, as they were at their litter can snack bars. What do you think that means? Yeah, sure. They were snacking at the trash cans, weren't they? That makes sense. Let's go on. I have a few more questions and then we'll continue reading. What makes pale, male pale, excuse me, what makes pale male distinct? How do you know that? Where in the text helps you know this? That's right. On the previous page, it told us he was different. It was how he looked. Then on this page, it tells us that once he is an adult, he has a red tail. Do you think also the type of hawk helps us know what will be distinguishable about him? Let's go on. Pale Mill thrived in his new home, and the birders were thrilled when he began courting another red tail. Day after day, they performed an aerial ballet of circling and swooping in unison over the park until, young as he was, Pale Mill won her as his mate. What do you think aerial ballet of circling and swooping means? When I think of aerial, it would be in the air. And ballet, I think of fancy, smooth dancing. But I don't think Pale Mail and his mate were dancing. Right, they were flying. But it sure was a nice way of, them, of the author presenting that they were actually very smooth. And the people enjoyed watching them. Good job. Let's go on. Oh, what do you think is happening here? Hmm. In March, the two hawks began building a nest in a tree near a baseball diamond on the Great Lawn. This was the first time that hawks had nested in the park since it opened in 1858. But Pale Mel and his mate were inexperienced builders. Their nest fell apart a month later. Undaunted, the two hawks immediately began building another nest in a tree near East 70th Street. This time, it was not poor construction, but location that did them in. The tree they chose had housed a crow's nest the year before. Crows are not our crows are natural enemies of hawks, and the crows of Central Park responded with unusual ferocity when they saw hawks nesting in their tree. Flocks of screaming black birds harassed the two hawks every time they left their nest. 
Finally, Pell-Mell's mate became so disoriented that she slammed into a high-rise at East 73rd Street. Witnesses called the Audubon Society. Her wing was badly broken, and she was taken to a hawk rescue center in Jersey. The bird watchers wondered what would happen to Pell-Mell now. They waited and watched, and the following winter, Pell-Mell, now sporting a flashy red tail, found a new mate. In March, they began building a nest. This nest would be different. This time, Pell-Mell moved his residence to a ledge above a top floor window at 927 Fifth Avenue, one of New York City's most exclusive apartment buildings. Bird experts had never heard of a red-tailed hawk with its nest on a building in the center of a bustling city. Maybe Pell-Mell wasn't too smart. But soon they saw that this bird was actually very smart. Metal spikes had been embedded in the ledge above the window to keep pigeons away. By forcing sticks and branches between these spikes, the hawks made a nest that could withstand hurricane winds. An ornate cornice hanging over the ledge provided protection from the elements. The building was just across the street from some of Pell-Mell's favorite hunting grounds, and the view of the park from the 12th floor was spectacular. New Yorkers couldn't ask for a better address. <laughs> Neither could Mel Pell. And I just said that backwards, excuse me. Neither could Pale Mel. Wow, it sounds like the New Yorkers would choose this apartment building to live in because of how fancy it was. Is that why Pale Mel chose this building? How do you know that? What text evidence explains why Pell Mail might have chosen this building to make the nest? All right, fifth graders, we have recognized how the text was primarily about a red-tailed hawk. We have also recognized some figurative language that helps the reader understand the text better by connecting. We defined the four assigned words and also showed how drawing a representation, writing a sentence, and recognizing antonyms and synonyms can also help us understand but also remember the meaning of a word. Your assignment is to complete the other three graphic organizers with these components to help you remember the definition of each word. Your three words are to define words to define, create a visual, write a sentence, and write antonyms and synonyms for are thrived, exclusive, meaning not allowing others to participate, and also being appealing um, as in expensive, and ornate, which means covered with decorations, might be covered with fancy patterns and shapes. Fifth graders, you can do this. We will continue to see what happens to Pell Mill in New York City next time. Do your best. You've got this.